Hi everyone! So this is going to be another video in the Paving Your Own Path series. So far I did an introduction kind of video and then I talked about um, figuring out what the divine is for you, like getting really clear on your beliefs about the divine, and then choosing your religious symbolism. So um, basically thinking about what symbolism is uh, most potent for you and works best for you in expressing those beliefs that you have about the divine. So once you have that kind of groundwork done, and there's an awful lot more groundwork that you, you can obviously do as well, but I thought those two things were kind of um, the first building blocks to kind of put in place before you start thinking about an actual practice. But once you have those, those building blocks in place, you can start to think about how you are actually going to express those beliefs and how you are going to build those basic symbols into something a little bit more complex um, and something that you can actually do rather than something that you just think about. I think um, a lot of people when they're kind of, when they consider themselves to be spiritual or walking their own spiritual path rather than being part of a wider religious organisation, I think a lot of people like that can kind of get a bit stuck when it comes to actually building um, a practice rather than simply thinking about um, their spirituality or meditating and journaling and stuff like that. A lot of people come into spirituality through self-development kind of practices like meditation and yoga and new age things and stuff like that. Um, and then it can be kind of difficult. You can kind of hit a bit of a wall when it comes to figuring out how you actually want to do ritual, for example, um, what you want to celebrate, how you want to celebrate it and that kind of stuff. So in future videos, I'm going to be talking in a lot more detail about all of these kinds of things. I'm going to talk in more detail about um, the religious calendar year, about daily practice, about uh, structuring ritual, writing ritual, that kind of thing. Um, but for this video, I want to talk quite generally about shaping your practice and what the kind of main things you might want to think about are when you're kind of either just starting to shape your practice or that you feel like it's not exactly what you want it to be and you're wanting to maybe change things up and start making it more your own. Um, so the first thing I will say is that an awful lot of pagans, um, not just pagans, but people in kind of alternative spiritual uh, practices, people who are trying to kind of develop their own path, an awful lot of people who come to these kinds of spiritualities feel a lot of pressure to be doing a lot of ritual um, and to be doing a lot of, like ritual very frequently and very complex ritual. Um, and I would say that this is not necessarily going to be helpful. For some people it will work if you have a lot of time, a lot of energy in your hands to be trying out a lot of different things, then by all means go ahead and do that. But um, I would say that when you're starting to just stick with, first of all, your calendar year and second of all, your daily practice. Those two things are going to be the bread and butter of your spiritual practice. Um, so your calendar year is something that you do want to figure out pretty early on, obviously, because you want to know in advance um, what, what holy days you're going to be celebrating and how you're going to be celebrating them and that kind of thing. You want to have some sort of idea in place before you um, start to kind of try to figure out the more the details of what your rituals are actually going to look like. Um, so I'm just going to use kind of neo-paganism as a general example, but this is definitely relevant for people no matter what kind of different religions and practices that you're kind of drawing together or drawing on, you can completely make up your own. Um, but I'll probably go, I'm probably going to refer to like the Wheel of the Year and stuff like that as examples, generally speaking, because that's my own experience, because that's what I draw on. Um, but yeah, you want to have a look at your, obviously your religious calendar year. Um, so let's say that it's the wheel of the year. You want to have a look at each spoke on the wheel of the year and not just kind of take for granted that you're going to just go along with um, the kind of standard meanings of those days and kind of follow things from a book and do what other people are doing. Obviously it's great to kind of get some inspiration from uh, people online or from books um, but you really want to think about what those days actually mean to you and um, don't feel completely drawn into celebrating all eight of those days, for example, if they're not meaningful to you. All eight of them are highly relevant to me, but that's because I actually grew up in a culture where the, the kind of four fire festivals, um, the, you know, uh, Imbolc, Bealtaine, Lunasa and Samhain, they are actually, um, they're actually Irish festivals and also they are the points at which the seasons change, at which we consider the seasons to change here in Ireland. So the beginning of spring is Imbolc, the beginning of summer is Bealtaine and so on. 
This is not the case in all cultures. Um, this is not the case in all, you know, Western countries. Not even every European country has this idea and certainly not in America. So if this, is, this isn't your experience, you might have a difficult time figuring out what these days actually mean to you. You know, for example, um, obviously the solstices and equinoxes because they are, um, because they are actual solar events, it makes perfect sense for me to celebrate them as well. So the Wheel of the Year as the eight spoke thing just always made a lot of sense for me. It came very organically to me. It's kind of, they are days that I would have almost been just acknowledging anyway, even before I even found out about Wicca, you know, nearly 15, well, not quite 15 years ago, but you know, coming up on it. So definitely don't feel pressured into, you know, following a certain system just because it's a system. Go into that system, look at what, it draws you to it think about the days that are meaningful to you and you know just go along with the ones that feel right if you end up with an unbalanced wheel of the year that you're celebrating more at one time of the year than another you know if that's okay for you that's okay if balance is important to you then that's how you're going to do things um so yeah you know if you have absolutely no connection whatsoever let's say to lunasa let's say that lunasa means absolutely nothing to you you know you just can't think it just it's not a time of year that means much to you, you can't think of anything in your life, in your daily life that would be happening or changing at that time or whatever it, whatever it is, then um, you don't have to celebrate Lunasa. <laughs> um, find other, maybe another holiday that you want to celebrate instead. And you can really be quite ad hoc with this. Like if you have certain deities that you're interested in, maybe you want to find out what their holy days are and incorporate them into your, into your calendar or whatever it is. Really, you can do whatever you want with this. I would say though not to get, get too heavy handed with creating a religious kind of calendar, yearly calendar. Um, I would say that like say the eight Sabbaths, I think eight is enough personally. Um, I think if it was any more than that kind of number, you would be starting to be totally overwhelmed. If you're reaching anything like once a month, um, I think it's really just too much. Eight to me feels like a lot. They come around very quickly. You really have only just moved through the energy of one and the next one is kind of upon you. So I would say that you don't want to scatter your year too heavily with these big markers because these kind of points on your calendar are going to be like really huge points of shift, shifting and changing times when you think about the seasons and what's happening on the earth or um, whatever it is that you want to contemplate as the year goes around. So you don't want to over overwhelm yourself with that. I just want to um, point that out. So um, while I, I think that you probably should think about your calendar year kind of in advance, you also want to go through the actual year and just kind of see how it goes for you as well. Um, just kind of see how, you know, there might be things about the year and the feel of the year that you have kind of forgotten about. If this is like, say, the first year that you are uh, dedicating to, you know, doing a spiritual practice, you might start to find that um, there are things that happen for you emotionally and spiritually during the year that you kind of never paid attention to or just never never consciously registered before. So definitely leave space for you to experience the year and just see how it goes and be spontaneous with what you wanna do on those points, like say on those points of the wheel of the year. Um, but you might actually wanna have like one one kind of theme and maybe even one kind of ritual action that you've pre-planned for each of those days because that means that if nothing kind of comes to you at the time you have a backup plan or not even just a backup plan but you have um, a starting point you have something that you feel is definitely relevant to that time of year that you want to acknowledge you know, you know a poem you want to speak um like a, a releasing ceremony of burning a piece of paper with something written on it or um eating a certain type of food, baking something, whatever it is, that you have that kind of specific thing that means something to you at that time of year that you're gonna do. And then you can build your ritual around that. You can apply whatever kind of ritual structure you're trying out at that time. Um, you can apply things that are just arising for you emotionally at that time or spiritually for, for you at that time, you know, as it comes up. The second thing then I was going to talk about is daily practice. Now, daily practice might or might not sound totally overwhelming to you. Um, and when I say daily practice, I'm not saying that you should be doing ritual every day. I haven't mentioned the lunar cycle at all so far because I feel like even committing yourself to doing ritual once a month on the full moon even, especially like twice a month on the full moon and dark moon, if you're kind of coming new into a spiritual practice or if you're trying to kind of completely overhaul your spiritual practice, that might be a bit too much. So I would suggest when it comes to kind of more regular things like that, you just see how it goes. And you know, if you feel like doing a ritual at that time, then do it. A daily practice, on the other hand, is, I think it's very important as a sort of um, 
habit mechanism. It's a, a way of forming a spiritual habit. It's a way of getting you kind of into the flow of remembering to kind of feel spiritual, remembering to set up a, a, a kind of connection with the divine. And I think it's actually very important to do so from a very early stage, but it doesn't have to be much. It doesn't have to be, you know, 20 minutes of meditation. It doesn't have to be like prayer beads and prayers and crystals and candles and an altar. And it doesn't have to be any of that stuff. It can be five minutes, it can be less. It can literally just be you saying a certain set of words when you open the curtains in the morning. It can just be, you know, or when you, when you're going to bed at night, that you have just a tiny little ritual that you stick into every day, but something that you can commit to that you know you will actually do every single day. And that you will not only do, but you, that you will get something out of. Um, so this is something to think about as well. Like what is the most meaningful nurturing thing that you can introduce into your daily life that will make you feel connected to the divine, that will make you feel spiritual, that will connect you to kind of your inner self and also to the outer world. Um, that's something that you should definitely start immediately with, I would, I would say. And like I say, start small, even if you think, oh, I can easily fit in 10, 20, 30 minutes in my day. Start small anyway. And um, the first week, start with five minutes. And if that goes really well, then you can add on more time and it will become more complex over time, I promise, because my, my daily practice certainly has. Um, tarot draws, that's another great thing that you might want to think about doing. Um, but keep it simple, keep it really, really simple and only make a kind of solid commitment to yourself to do that really simple thing every day. Um, especially as well, if, if you have a couple of different things that you're telling yourself you want to do every day, like say you want to journal every day, you want to meditate every day, you want to do yoga every day um, and you want to do, you know, like a prayer or some sort of other daily practice thing. Don't put pressure on yourself to do all of those things every single day. Like I say, I would say just pick one thing, one simple thing that you know that even if you are, have had an exhausting day, you, um, you literally have no time left in your day, you just want to go to bed and you just think, oh, I haven't done any of those th spiritual things yet today at all. If there's something that you can do in five minutes, you are much more likely to keep that habit ticking over. Um, and as long as you don't kind of start beating yourself up because you didn't do all of the things, you know? If you have that one thing that you know, I will do this every day, and if the rest of it happens, then great. Then I think that, that is more likely to get you into the kind of flow of spiritual practice and the flow of feeling like you're actually achieving a spiritual practice, achieving your goals of becoming more spiritually centered. Um, I think it's a lot more useful to kind of focus on those simple, short little practices that will actually kind of become the bread and butter of your spiritual practice. Um, a final thing that I want to talk about in relation to kind of shaping your spiritual practice is the question of religious practice or devotional practice versus self-development. Um, especially in, you know, the neo-pagan, neo new age, those kinds of communities and those kinds of spiritualities, these two things can really become quite conflated. It can be quite hard to see where one ends and the other begins. And this varies from person to person. I think if you're like a hard polytheist and you have a very kind of um, particular kind of relationship with your gods and you have kind of, that it's very much worship and that you are, you know what I mean. If you have a very solid kind of devotional practice with gods that you consider to be outside entities, that's very definitely going to be very separate from any self-development kind of practice that you have. But I think that the more fluid your ideas are about divinity, I think the more pantheistic the idea or even the more atheistic your ideas are about the world, um, but let's just say pantheistic, um, if you have very sort of, if you kind of think of the divine as being the all um, and all of this practice is just sort of, because if you have a pantheistic world belief, for example, anything, any inner work that you do, any kind of work you do on yourself is part and parcel of working with the divine because you are part of the divine, if you see what I mean. So I think that's where the, the lines start to get, get very, very blurry. Um, and when it comes to magic as well, it's very, very blurred, whether or not it's actually kind of devotional or spiritual or whether it is actually just a form of self-development. Um, and that's where the kind of division between high magic and low magic comes in, whether it's kind of um, very ceremonial kind of magic or whether it's magic that you're doing to um, better your life, to kind of further your self-development or what have you. So I would say that when you're getting started with figuring out what your practice is going to look like, what 
kind of components are going to be integrated into your practice, what your ritual is going to look like, what your daily practice is going to look like. I would say it's worth thinking about where you draw the line yourself, where you see a, a line being drawn between religious practice and self-development. And if for you the two things are completely hand in hand, well that's absolutely fine. You might see self-development and doing things like meditation and stuff like that as a means to achieve spiritual enlightenment. So therefore self-development for you is your spiritual practice and that's absolutely fine. Or on the other hand, you might not want to kind of integrate any sort of self-development into it at all. You might wanna see that as a totally separate thing that you do outside of your spiritual or religious practice. And you might wanna just focus on devotion and completely on external kind of on looking outside of yourself when it comes to kind of religious practice and spiritual and uh, practice ritual, whatever. Um, so that's something that you might wanna think about and think about where that line is for you and how those two things kind of come together. I think magic and ritual are, are very interesting, are very interesting ways in which these two things do kind of come together, kind of clash, so to speak. Because ritual, even ritual that is focused on, say, celebrating a Sabbath or um, that you're kind of um, revering a deity or something, depending on how kind of archetypal your understanding of, the, of deities are and that kind of thing, those kinds of rituals really often bring about a lot of internal change and they are often very kind of connected to self-development, that you, um, you might do a path working and you're kind of trying to understand more your beliefs about divinity and you're trying to have a spiritual experience but at the same time you are kind of talking to parts of yourself you are um, exploring the inner terrain as a means to understand the outer terrain and um, so i think ritual and, and magic as well to a certain extent um, is a very interesting kind of combination of these two things when it comes to things like prayer and um, giving sacrifice to gods and stuff like that that's quite clear cut but um in a lot of sort of neo-pagan type ritual and magic and stuff like that, it, they, it almost is like um, a kind of unique sort of combination between the two, um, between self-development and religious practice. So yeah, in thinking about this, you might want to maybe create a, a very short list of spiritual goals for yourself. Like with your spirituality, what is it that you want to achieve? What do you want to feel, for example? Um, what is, is it that you want your life to look like? What is it that you want your spiritual practice to change about yourself or about your life? And um, generally speaking, you will find that it is kind of feelings that you want to evoke in yourself. And um, that being spiritual, if you, being spiritual is something that you want to do in order to feel more connected, in order to feel like life is more meaningful, in order to feel devotion, in order to feel awe. Um, things like that. So you might want to do a little bit of a brainstorm and kind of come up with a few key words or feelings that you want to achieve through your spiritual practice. And that will kind of help you focus your choices when it comes to deciding what practices you're actually going to stick with and what you're not. Because then you can kind of look at all the, the multitude of different kind of practices that you can, you can work with and think, well, you know, how does that tie in with these different goals that I have? You also might want to write down the different spiritual practices that you're interested in. So, you know, meditation, for example, um, practicing magic, um, you know, prayer, path working, casting a circle, anything like that. You might want to kind of write down all the different types of like practices that you're interested in and consider whether you think that they are more to do with self-development or more to do with, um, with uh, religious practice, with religious devotion. So something like, say, tarot. Tarot is generally speaking, in the, in the context of a spiritual practice, it's generally speaking more to do with self-development. But you can also use tarot in a way that is kind of devotional. You can draw cards um, for a deity or to inspire you to work with a deity in a specific way and that kind of thing. Um, or to give you pointers on how to express your devotion on a particular day, depending on what card you draw, that kind of thing. So even, even if you have particular practices that you think are associated with one or the other, you might find that there are ways that you can integrate, integrate both into that practice or into that tool. Um, meditation for me, for example, it started out being primarily about self-development, but it has actually turned more into a kind of devotional kind of practice for me now. 
it very definitely is something that I use to calm myself, to center myself, to um, alleviate stress, to just give me space and stillness and silence in every day, to just let my emotional self kind of just come to the fore and be processed. But also when I meditate, I focus on abstract concepts in a way that are my main symbols of the divine. Like I focus on silence, I focus on stillness, um, and I focus on sort of um, the, that weird combination of the infinitely small and the infinitely large. Um, that to me is, is, a, is a potent symbol and a very kind of abstract kind of symbol um, of the divine. So those kind of three things combined, it's this kind of feeling, this kind of indescribable thing that I focus on, this sensation almost that I focus on in meditation. Um, and that brings about a meditative state for me. So it's um, physiologically, it's getting me into the right state. It's doing me good physiologically and mentally and psychologically and everything. But also it's connecting me to how I understand the divine. It's connecting me to my sense of reverence and awe. So in that regard, it has become more important to me in a devotional aspect than in a self-developmental one. Even though if I did stop meditating, I would probably find myself to be more scattered and more emotionally volatile and stressed and stuff like that. But that, hasn't, that isn't any more my main motivation for doing meditation. So yeah, those are just a couple of things uh, to think about. My, that final point that I made about the, um, the relationship between self-development and kind of devotional religious practice is something that I might talk about again. And definitely all the other things that I touched on, I will be talking about in more detail in later videos so um, I hope that was helpful and as always let me know if you have any questions or anything you want me to cover in later videos I have already had a couple of questions um, via email which I haven't managed to integrate into these videos yet but I definitely will be doing so and you can pretty much assume that if you ask me a question I will get to it um, Obviously there's a limit to how much I can reply to anybody one-on-one -on -one because you know my time is limited and also Developing spiritual practice is something that I um, I have as a as a spiritual mentoring um, So I kind of don't want to be offering one person something for free that another person is paying for if you see what I mean So I definitely have a certain limit to how much I'll be able to get back to you one-on-one -on -one, um, Outside of a kind of paid mentor mentorship when it comes to these questions, but definitely if you have any questions I will endeavor to get them into a video or even make um, a separate kind of video response for any more convoluted questions. So I'll leave it there for the moment. Um, I'm really looking forward to making the next video in this series because I'm really enjoying them so far. And um, I'll talk to you all soon. Um, hope you're all very well.